This is OnePlus's first foldable phone, the OnePlus Open. Right now, the most popular of these sorts of devices are Samsung's Z Fold series. But could the OnePlus Open be an even better alternative? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our full review. The OnePlus Open needs to bring a lot to stand up to the likes of the Galaxy Z Fold 5, Samsung's most advanced smartphone, but it seems to be up to the challenge. Although it's OnePlus's first foldable, the OnePlus Open's design is surprisingly refined. It actually borrows a lot from Oppo's Find N series. In fact, the new Oppo Find N3 is the same device, but for the Chinese and Asian markets. The OnePlus Open features two superb OLED screens, a flagship chipset, and three cameras on the back bearing the Hasselblad logo. OnePlus actually markets the Open as a premium camera phone, and its triple camera setup looks quite promising and versatile. But first, let's get into the design. This has got to be among the most well-designed foldable smartphones we've encountered yet. The OnePlus Open will be available in green in some markets, with a glass back instead of vegan leather. With the round camera housing and grippy vegan leather back, the phone just feels classy. The flat frame is thin and made from an aerospace-grade alloy that's stronger yet lighter than steel. As a result, the OnePlus Open is both thinner and lighter than the Z Fold 5. The hinge itself is also thinner than many competitors. It uses a streamlined design with fewer parts, making it lighter and perhaps less prone to failure. And the crease where the phone folds over is quite subtle. We actually couldn't even feel it. It is visible, but still, this is some impressive engineering. The OnePlus Open is rated at IPX4 for protection against splashes of water. You can't submerge the phone like you can the Z Fold 5, but splash resistance is still nice to have. Let's get into the display, starting with the outer one. The cover screen is a 6.31 inch LTPO3 OLED with a pixel density of 431 PPI and a 120 Hz refresh rate. It features a new glass called Ceramic Guard, developed by OnePlus, and is supposed to be more impact resistant than Gorilla Glass Victus. This display has a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, and is more comfortable to use for your everyday tasks than the narrower display of the Z Fold 5. The inner display is a foldable 7.82 inch LTPO3 OLED with a pixel density of 426 ppi and a 120Hz refresh rate. The large, tablet-like size of the inner screen is one of the main reasons to get a foldable phone in the first place, and while there is no stylus support, the performance here is great. Just like the cover screen, the colors are accurate, and you have support for HDR10 Plus video and Dolby Vision. And most of the display settings apply identically to both this screen and the outer one, for consistency. When it comes to brightness, both the inner and the outer display are quite similar. They max out at around 600 nits with the manual slider, and they're able to boost to around 1200 nits in auto brightness mode. The Z Fold 5 is a bit brighter with the manual slider, up to around 750 nits, but the max auto brightness there is about the same as the OnePlus's. Both screens of the OnePlus Open have that high refresh rate to smooth out your swiping and scrolling. The inner display is extra adaptive though, able to dial down to 1Hz when idling, versus a minimum of 10Hz on the cover display. We couldn't test this because the Android refresh rate counter only showed 120 or 60Hz. Also, like on other OnePlus phones, there's no support for high frame rate gaming here. The OnePlus Open has three Dolby Atmos speakers, one at the bottom and two at the top. Absolute loudness is just average here, but the sound quality is very good, with some bass, great vocals, and nice highs. You can hear for yourself with the provided link. To wake up and unlock the phone, there's a capacitive fingerprint reader built into the power button on the side. You also get an alert slider like on other high-end OnePlus phones, so you can easily silence your device. There's just one option for storage, 512 gigs, and that's not expandable via microSD card. The interface of the OnePlus Open is Oxygen OS 13.2, with some extra foldable-centric features added in. Besides those, the experience is basically the same as you'd get on any recent OnePlus, Oppo, or Realme phone. You can check out our dedicated Realme UI video if you'd like a more in-depth software overview. Let's talk about those foldable features though. For one, the home screen stays identical, regardless of whether you're on the cover screen or the inner one. And whatever app is open on one screen will remain open when you switch to the other one. Of course, there are dock icons like you'd see on a tablet, and the taskbar shows a minimized view of these icons when you're away from the home screen. 
Samsung is well known for the multitasking options on their foldables, but OnePlus brings plenty of those as well. You can start off with their standard split screen with two apps, of course. But then you can add a third split screen app next to those two and scroll between them. You can also have the third app take a full screen like view, on top or at the bottom of the split screen configuration. This is what OnePlus calls Open Canvas. Or you can mix split screen with a floating app, but you can't have more than three active on screen apps at a time. The OnePlus Open also allows apps to take advantage of its half open state. So far, we found it to work only on YouTube and within the camera app. Finally, I'll mention the software support. OnePlus is promising four years of major OS updates and five years of security patches for the OnePlus Open. The chipset of the OnePlus Open is the current flagship silicon from Qualcomm, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. As you'd expect, it provides top grade performance for both demanding applications and gaming. It's worth noting that in comparison, the Z Fold 5's chipset is a special Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made for Galaxy phones, with slightly faster clock speeds and higher benchmark scores. Also, we discovered that by default, the OnePlus Open will put limits on its CPU performance to save battery. You have to enable the high performance battery mode to have the phone run at its full potential. When it comes to the thermal management, the OnePlus Open does a decent job. We put it through our prolonged stress test when unfolded, and saw some gradual thermal throttling but nothing dramatic. While closed, the thermals are a little bit worse but still not too bad. And it's worth noting that throughout this testing the phone never got hot, or even that warm. The OnePlus Open's battery capacity is about 4800mAh, and the battery life is good. The phone earned an endurance rating of 96 hours when tested unfolded on the large screen. When tested on the cover screen, the scores were even better, adding up to an endurance rating of 105 hours. The OnePlus Open supports 67 watt charging, but the charger that comes in the box may be an 80 watt or a 67 watt one, depending on the market. With the 80 watt adapter, we were able to charge the phone from 0 to 80% in half an hour. A full charge took 42 minutes. Now we have the OnePlus Open's cameras. There's a 48 megapixel main cam, a 64 megapixel telephoto cam with 3 times optical zoom, and a 48 megapixel ultra wide cam. The main cam uses a Sony LYT808 sensor, similar to the one used in this year's Xperia flagships. It's part of Sony's new lineup of stacked sensors called Lightia. The OnePlus Open's main camera saves 12 megapixel photos by default, and they have an impressive level of detail, with balanced, natural looking processing, all the way down to the fine details. There's plenty of contrast, and the colors are vivid and lively. The dynamic range is wide enough too. The portrait mode on the OnePlus Open offers three zoom levels, one times, two times, and three times. Each mode produces an effect that mimics a specific Hasselblad lens. No matter which mode you choose, the portraits are always outstanding. The subject is detailed, sharp, and well exposed, and the bokeh is lovely and realistic. In low light, the OnePlus Open can apply its automatic night mode processing. You can also toggle the night mode on manually. These sorts of photos we shot with the main camera are excellent, with a ton of detail, no noise, wide dynamic range, and lively colors. 4K video from the main cam has plenty of natural looking detail. There's no over sharpening here. The colors look good, and there's no noise. The dynamic range is wide, and the contrast is alright. The always on electronic stabilization does an excellent job at smoothing out the footage. Low light video from the main cam is generally good, with a bright exposure, wide dynamic range, and enough detail. There are a lot of noticeable artifacts though. The telephoto cam produces stunning 3x zoom photos. They have top notch detail with natural rendition, balance sharpening, and no noise. The colors are punchy, but not over the top. The contrast is great, and the dynamic range is adequate. The telephoto cam also offers a 6x lossless zoom via a crop from the center of the 64 megapixel sensor. These photos have plenty of detail and nice colors. They are a bit softer than the 3x ones, naturally and we can spot a minor spike in the noise levels, but these still turned out nice. At night, the OnePlus Open will rarely use the telephoto camera, instead using a crop from the main cam. The times it does decide to use the telephoto cam, the results are great, with a high level of detail, low noise, and wide dynamic range. Too bad it doesn't use it more often. The three times zoomed videos from the telephoto camera are as great as the ones from the primary cam. They're detailed, with balanced processing, excellent color rendition, and wide dynamic range. The ultra-wide camera's photos are good, with low noise, likable colors, and enough detail, with a balanced rendition. 
the corners remain sharp enough, and the dynamic range is average. Sometimes the photos appear overexposed, but this could be improved through a software update. Since the ultrawide has autofocus, it can take photos of close-up subjects. These macro shots we took are quite nice. They're colorful, with a lot of detail and sharpness. In low light conditions, the auto night mode always kicked in for the ultrawide, and the results are great. They are well exposed and detailed, with low noise, decent color saturation, and wide dynamic range. The ultrawide camera captures great 4K videos with adequate detail, no visible noise, accurate colors, high contrast, and wide dynamic range. The OnePlus Open has two selfie cameras, a 32 megapixel one within the cover screen, and a 20 megapixel cam within the inner screen. The 32 megapixel selfies from the cover screen camera are high in detail. The dynamic range is good, and colors are true to life. However, upon close inspection, the photos have somewhat poor processing. Selfies from the inner screen are a bit less detailed. They do offer wide dynamic range and punchy colors, and are noise-free. But as with other foldable phones, you can take selfies with the rear cameras as well, using the cover screen as a viewfinder. The main camera shoots excellent selfies with lovely natural bokeh. The amount of detail here, and the rendition, knocks traditional selfie cameras out of the water. So that's the OnePlus Open. Foldable phones are still a hard sell for many people, but they're improving more and more each year, and OnePlus may have come out with the best one yet. The OnePlus Open has a very refined build, you can't even feel the crease. The displays are top-notch, you get extended software support, the chipset is flagship grade, and the cameras are excellent. On the other hand, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 could provide you with stylus support, wireless charging, and a higher rating for water resistance. But if you don't need those features, and you don't mind paying that top dollar to get a foldable, then the OnePlus Open is as premium as they come, and it's worth recommending. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're looking for another option besides the OnePlus Open on our channel, you can check out our review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Let us know what you think down below, and I'll see you on the next one.